जय ओम विष्णु पाद परमहंस परिब्रज जगाचार्य वाद्या स्तोत्र सत्य श्री श्रीमान कुलचूरमानी सार्व शास्त्र सिद्धांत वेचुल भक्ति रखक श्रीदा देव गोस्वामी महाराज की जय जय नित्य लीला भगवान श्री लोकति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर की जय रूपानुग गुरु बाग्य की जय नामाचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की जय जय श्री चैतन्य सरस्वत आचार्य वृंद की जय साम दई तबाइशनव मंडली की जाए जाए प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नितानंद श्री दई तक राधा श्री बास आदि श्री गौर भक्त ब्रिंद की जाए जाए को कार्तेल की जाए श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाए नितय गौर प्रेम नंदे हरि हरि बो Welcome everyone to our Sunday afternoon talk from the uh, East London branch of Sri Chaitanya Sarasvati Mat. Today on the Sunday, the twenty fifth of September, two thousand twenty two. So we, here we are. continuing the discussion of um the books of Sri Sri Damarj our founder acharya founder acharya Sri Chaitanya Sarasvat Mat his seminal works five books which Sri Guru Maharaj said were uh his five deities he considered or Sri Govind Maharaj said uh Bhakti Sudeo Goswami Maharaj has given me five deities: Sri Krishna, Krishna, Reality, the Beautiful, Sri Guru, and His Grace, the Golden Volcano of Divine Love, um, the Lord's Loving Search for His Lost Servants, and the Subjective Evolution of Consciousness, the Play of the Sweet Absolute. So these five books recorded from that. directly from the english talks of his divine grace shri lakshmi damaraj in the 1980s and uh <coughs> presented to the world his five books there now we we're on the third book now the um golden volcano of divine love which incidentally shri lakshmi damaraj considered his favorite book it was his favorite of all of those books so last week we finished part 1 of the life of shri chaitanya dev some glimpses into his life and appearance and so on and this week we are beginning part 2 the shikastaka the precepts of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu so as we mentioned before shri chaitanya dev he only um left us from his own you can say holy pen uh eight verses of instruction which are known as the shikshastaka and uh, they are very uh, profound and deep and practical um necessary essential for for all of those as, who are aspiring to give themselves to the service of lord shri krishna and hoping for um uh the prospect of eternal life in goloka dham with the lord then these teachings of chaitanya dev the eight precepts shikastakam they are the essential requirement although those were the only eight from his own hand we can say so many books the books of the goshamis rupa goshami sanatan goshami ragnath das goshami ragnath bhata goshami jiva goshami gopal bhata goshami then these their writings are expansions on this shikshastakam explanation and uh, further expansion uh, for our uh, benefit on the, on uh, the teachings of shri chaitanya dev then after them the the uh, writings of shrinivas acharya and narottam das thakur shamananda prabhu and then later baladev vijayabhushan and vishwanath chakravarti thakur coming down to bhaktivinoda thakur the, the uh, 
writings of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, which reinvigorated the, uh, the path of devotion as given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, in the modern age. And from Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, the founder of the Gaudiya Mission, and from him, his, his uh, dedicated followers, most notably Srila Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada, our Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Rakak, Sri Dadev Goswami Maharaj, and in our line following him, Srila Bhakti Sunda Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj, and all of our present day Acharyas, they are all eternally expanding on these eight verses of Sri Chaitanya Dev. So we can understand they are very essential for the uh, education and proper understanding of devotion in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, today we will begin our discussion of this, these eight verses. The first chapter, which deals with the first verse, is called the holy name of Krishna. <coughs> this is the verse. Cheto darpana marjanam, bhava maha davagni nevapanam, shreya kairavya, kairava chandrika vitaranam vidya barujivanam, anandam buddhivardhanam, pratipadam ponam ritasvadhanam, sarvatmasnapanam, Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. And this is the translation. The holy name of Krishna cleanses the mirror of the heart and extinguishes the fire of misery in the forest of birth and death. As the evening lotus blooms in the moon's cooling rays, the heart begins to blossom in the nectar of the name. And at last the soul awakens to its real inner treasure, a life of love with Krishna. Again and again tasting nectar, the soul dives and surfaces in the ever-increasing ocean of ecstatic joy. All phases of the self, which, may, which we may conceive, are fully satisfied and purified, and at last conquered, by the all-auspicious influence of the holy name of Krishna. And this is the illumination by His Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Rakak, Sri Dadev Goswami Maharaj. <coughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the pioneer of Sri Krishna Sankirtan. He said, I have come to inaugurate the chanting of the holy name of Krishna, and that name will reach every nook and corner of the universe. Prithivityache jata nagaradi gram sarvatra prachar hoibe moranam. What is the meaning of Shankirtan? Shamyak means full, and Kirtan means chanting. Together, these two words form the word Shankirtan, which generally means congregational chanting of the holy name of Krishna. But Samyak means full not only in quantity, but also in quality. Full quantity means extensive in number or congregational, and full quality means complete praise. Complete praise can only mean the glorification of Krishna and not any other god. So Sankirtan means complete Kirtan, a song in praise of the complete whole, the absolute truth. Anything else is only a partial representation and therefore defective to a certain extent. Therefore, Krishna should be praised. His glory should be chanted for he is everything. He is the master, the dispenser of both good and bad, the absolute controller of everything. 
Everything is due to Him. The fulfillment of all life is reached in Him alone. Just as a horse may have reins to check his movements, but if let loose will run freely, praise which is unchecked by any mundane purpose will run straight towards the supreme cause, Krishna. <coughs> the word Sri means Lakshmi Devi, Krishna's potency. This means that in Sankirtan, Krishna is worshipped along with his potency, for Krishna's potency is included within him. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that Sri Krishna Sankirtan should thrive throughout the world. It should be victorious without any hindrance. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtan. It should be a spontaneous, unchecked and natural flow. It should be exclusive, independent and without reservation. And this praise of Krishna should be congregationally chanted. That by vibration is beneficial for the whole world. Only by surrender and pure devotion can we take to Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Hmm. Hare Krishna. So, one thought come into my mind regarding this is sometimes because we heard from Srila Guru Maharaj directly actually directly heard from Srila Guru Maharaj. if the leader of the Sankirtan party is not a Shuddha Bhakta or Shuddha Vaishnava then that vibration may only be Nama Parada not Shuddha Nam so then Sometimes devotees say, oh no, I'm not going on the Sankirtan because the leader is not a Shuddha Vaishnava. So, in Shuddha Bhakta, then his vibration may only be Namaharad. I'll just be out participating in Namaharad. But actually, it, it's more broad than that, Srila Guru Maharaj's declaration. So, what it means is where the backing is. Where is the backing? And so, if the Shankirtan is, has the backing of a Shuddha Vaishnava, then it is perfect and proper. And we should have no hesitation to join with that Shankirtan. But that it will be our question. Who is the, what, what is the backing of that Shankirtan? Who is behind that Shankirtan? Who, is, um, who has ordained that and who has um, authorized that? And if we are following in the, properly in the line of our Guru, then our Shankirtan will be um, good and proper, although our personal defects may be there, no doubt, but they will not interfere with that proper flow. Just like the, uh, in the um, uh, electrical appliance, if the current is coming from the, from the proper source, then we can understand that the power will be there, even if the, even if the person who installed it may not be the perfect uh, electrician or whatever. There's still the power is there. So, you know, if we um, plug our device into that mains, if the current is there coming from the original source, then we will get the power from that. And we also have to be careful about counterfeit, counterfeit devices. Not so much in the electricity world, but you know, when my, uh, many years ago, one of my colleagues at work, his brother-in-law was imprisoned for making, um, for making uh, counterfeit ATM machines. He was part of a group of people. They made these counterfeit ATM machines and they would find a, um, like a vacant shop front and rent that shop front and install it in the window of the shop. 
So people would come along thinking that they could draw money out of that. And for all intents and purposes, looked exactly like a, a normal ATM machine. So they'd put their, mach their you know, bank card into the ATM machine and a message would come up and say, sorry, this machine is out of order. Please try again later or something like that. So then it would eject their card. They would take their card, be on their way. But what they didn't know was that it was actually a card reader. So when they inserted their card into that machine, it read all the information, all their personal information, all their bank details, everything off that card. And then they would clear out their bank account of that poor unsuspecting person. They would put their card in the machine and go away thinking it was something wrong with the machine. And then, they, and then they, later on they'd find their bank account had been cleared out of all its funds. So this man was a, a, a relative of one of my colleagues at work and he was, he was, finally they were arrested for that. Tracked down and arrested and they were making, you know, a lot of money doing that by that fraudulent behaviour. So for all intents and purposes it looked the same as a normal, as an ATM machine that you might find in any bank or building society. So similarly, the holy name of the Lord, and they, whoever may be chanting, may be chanting, and doing that Sankirtan, but, if, but it may not be genuine. It may sound the same, but if it does not have the proper backing of the authorized source, in, like in this case, if it isn't a, a proper bank machine, it may not just... Um, reject your card, but it may actually um, take away all of your spiritual assets. When you join with that Sankirtan, you may find yourself going in the wrong way and your spiritual life going in the wrong way. So we need to be a little bit cautious about with whom we join in the Sankirtan of the Lord. And we, we need to understand who is backing this? Who is behind this? So, uh, this is what Guru Maharaj means when the, that the leader of the Sankirtan party should be a Shuddha Vaishnava. Of course, if the, if the Sankirtan leader himself is a good devotee, that's best. That is uh, everything. But, good or bad or, you know, whatever his position may be, the leader of that Sankirtan, if he's connected with the proper source, and if that is authorized by the proper source, then the, the genuine current will be there. And so we should have no hesitation to connect with that Sankirtan. That will be beneficial for everyone. For us, for, and for, uh, who will join with that chanting, and for all those that hear also that chanting. <coughs> So Guru Maharaj says, the praise of Krishna should be congregationally chanted. That vibration is beneficial for the whole world. Only by surrender and pure devotion can we take to Sri Krishna Sankirtan. <coughs> what are the different stages through which we will pass while chanting the holy name of Krishna? The first stage is that it cleanses the mirror of the mind. If the mirror of the mental system is covered with dust, we cannot see things clearly, and scriptural advice cannot be properly reflected there. What are the different kinds of dust covering the mirror of the mind? They are our infinite, fleeting, unorganized desires, which are considered dust. And our hearts and minds are covered with layers and layers of this dust. Therefore, we cannot see things properly. They cannot properly reflect in our mind because it is covered with the infinite, ordinary desires of this mundane world. Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Shakalai Ashanta. So the first effect of Sri Krishna Sankirtan is the cleansing of the mind. The Vedic social system, Barnashram Dharma, has been formed for this purpose. If we discharge our social duties perfectly, without any at attraction for the consequences, we achieve purifi purification of our consciousness. But the first installment of Nam Sankirtan 
gives us the end result of Varnashram Dharma, purification of the heart and mind. Then we can understand Vedic advice properly. The next effect of chanting the holy name is that it extinguishes the fire of material existence in the forest of repeated birth and death. We are forced to come into creation and again die. The mundane wave catches the soul, which mingles with that vibration in different stages. But this is stopped by the second effect of Sri Krishna Sankirtan, and we become liberated. With the first stride, the intelligence is purified, and with the second stride, the holy name effects liberation from the great conflagration of threefold miseries. The threefold miseries are adi adiatmic miseries within the body and mind, such as disease and mental anxiety. Adibotic miseries from our neighbors, man, beasts, insects, and so many other living beings. And adidaibic, natural catastrophes like famine, flood, and earthquake. We have to suffer from these three kinds of miseries, which burn in our heart like fire. But everything is extinguished forever by the second stride of Nama Shankirtan, which gives us relief. So you, then we should understand that properly that it, this doesn't mean that, that um, we won't have any um, suffering in our mind and body, that we won't receive um, uh, suffering we won't get any disease or we won't have any mental anxiety. We won't get um, trouble from our neighbors, from other, other be living beings, insects, so on. We won't, uh, we won't be the victims of any natural catastrophe like famine, flood, earthquake. No, those things will still come. They will still go on. But the difference is that they, we won't be um, internally disturbed by that those things will go on but we will get, we can go on in the mood of toleration but not just in toleration but uh, but they will not be they will all be seen in their proper perspective as only superficial movement of this material world we won't need that to disturb us Actually, it, it, it seems to me i may be wrong uh, Guru Maharaj is talking about a shooter now no, but uh, he's talking about Nama Shankirtan. It doesn't mean that that, na that without Shuddha Nam, Nama Shankirtan won't have any effect on us. Nama Shankirtan is, uh, is also the cause of Shuddha Nam, for the Shuddha Nam to descend. So it's not that, oh, well, I won't do any Nama Shankirtan until it's Shuddha Nam. But it is, the, it is the effect of Nama Shankirtan. That, our, that step by step, our consciousness will become adjusted. Mm -hmm. It's not that oh, we'll just be suffering in everything until the Shuddha Nam comes. This is gradual by degree. What we are, when we come to Krishna consciousness, what all our desires, fleet, fleeting desires, and so many urges of the body and the mind and so on, they all they stay there, and they remain there also. But as we develop in Krishna consciousness, they have less uh, control over us because we are, we are focused on something more than that. So we can say, you know, that um, previously, at least we can say this much in our own life, in our own experience. Previously, we had so many ambitions and so many um, things that we wanted to accomplish in this material world. But by the grace of Harinam, by the grace of Guru and Vaishnava, those things have diminished and those things have no, not so much control over our lives anymore. They are only going on in, in, in an inconsequential way. We are not really ambitious for anything of this world anymore. And that is only due to the, to the awakenment uh, of some, some uh, higher consciousness otherwise that is not possible otherwise it is 
those things have no end to us. Even a man on his deathbed, he's only, he's only thinking about uh, lamenting over all of the unfulfilled desires left in his life at that time. Oh, no, I can't. I have so many things. I can't die now. I have so many things that I need to accomplish, so many things that I need to achieve. But a devotee, they, they do not care for anything in this world. Ultimately, they only want the service of Krishna, of Guru and Hari Guru and Vaishnava. And, uh, and this is all part of the process of Nama Shankirtan. So it's not, it's not like a, it can be, but it's generally, it's not just like one day your material and the next day they flick a switch and you become fully enlightened in Krishna consciousness. It's a, a process, gradual process which takes years and, and lives for us to, to come to the, to the end of that. But it, is, but it begins with Nam Shankirtan, and Mahaprabhu says in this verse that in the, the, the first and second steps of Nam Shankirtan, these are the results, that we are able to see clearly what is matter, what is spirit, what is... Maya, what is Krishna, and so on, and all of the sufferings that uh, that uh, come to us in the material world, they they recede from our consciousness because it's not what happens to you in life that is significant. It is how you react to those things that happen to you that's significant, and if you are able to deal with them in a Krishna conscious way, then they don't have the sway or the pull over you that they, they do for the non-devotee who cannot see beyond that. And of course, it's easy to say that when, when you're actually in the midst of some calamity in this material world, and then the test will come. As uh, Martin Luther King said, it's not like in the time of, of comfort and convenience that we can see how strong our conviction is, but in the time of adversity, when we see where, what is our creed, what is our, what is our real belief. Do we actually believe that or do we just saying it, lip deep service to that? So that will be the test when, the, when these things come to face us, how we will deal with them. And uh, that is nothing in, to, to do with Shudanam. Shudanam is far and above all of that. Shudanam is fully transcendental. Then there's not even any necessity to discuss these things with the advent of Shudanam because all of that necessarily just dissolves. Like, you know, just like a waking up from a bad dream. But in the midst of it, everything, we have to deal with that. And then <coughs> by the power of Krishna Nam, we find some relief from the material world. So this is why Guru Maharaj says, by the second stride of Nam Shankitan, which gives us relief. So it gives us some relief from the suffering of this material world. So that my point is that, that, that not, those things will not disappear. It's not that, uh, you know, that, that all the devotees were unaffected by the, uh, by the COVID pandemic. Oh, no, we're devoted. It's not going to touch us. We're, it's still there, but how you deal with that, how you view that, that is another thing. Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote in his time, there was a bubonic plague. And he said, why the Vaishnavas are so, um, should, be, should be so anxious about this plague? It does nothing. It is, demeans your, um, your status if you if you allow it to affect you so much. said, what's the worst that it can do is kill your body. And everyone has to die anyway. But everyone, the non-devotees, they're clinging on to that as if it's the most important thing. And uh, with fear, great fear. But the devotees have no fear. The next stage is Shreya Kairavya Chandrika Bitarana. The holy name bestows upon us the supreme goal of life. After doing away with these negative engagements, 
our positive engagement begins and ultimately takes us to reality, to the real truth, which is eternal, auspicious, and beautiful. It takes us to that auspiciousness, which is above the world of difficulty. And in a general way, we achieve the supreme goal, the highest auspiciousness. The greatest good from chanting the holy name of Krishna. If we analyze this scrutinizingly, we find that in this stage, the holy name takes us to an intimate personal relationship with Krishna, which includes neutrality, servitude, friendship and filial affection. Shanta, Dasya, Sakya and Batsalya Rasa. Shreya covers the grace of Nityananda Prabhu. For it is by his grace that we may be allowed to worship Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. Nittaya Karuna Habe, Brajje Radha Krishna Pabe. The next stage is Bidya Bhaddu Jivana. The holy name prepares us for the wholesale surrender to Krishna that is found in conjugal love or Madhura Rasa where the devotees surrender themselves infinitely at the disposal of Krishna. The next stage is Anandam Buddhi Vardhanam. When we come to the proper level while chanting the name of Krishna, we find the transcendental ocean that is above all sorts of experience. So we can say definitely that this, now Guru Maharaj is talking about Shuddhana. He's talking about the higher stage. That is after we come to the, to the consciousness of, you can say, freedom from uh, the negative side of this material world. That we are, not, we are not controlled by that. We are not cowed down by that. We are free from that within our consciousness. Now the effects of Shudanam begin that the, we enter into some uh, auspiciousness and some, and some uh, actual be beginning, you can say, budding of relationship with Krishna in one of the f four rasas. And then uh, after that, uh, the fifth rasa, which is the conjugal uh, Madhura rasa. The next stage, Guru Maharaj says, the next stage is Bidya Badu Jivanam. The holy name prepares us for the wholesale surrender to Krishna that is found in conjugal love, Madhura Rasa, where the devotees surrender themselves infinitely at the disposal of Krishna. So without the awakening of Shudanam, this is not possible. And not simply by, you know, a rote repetition of the mantra that this will come. But when the, when the budding of, the, of Shuddha awakens in the heart of the devotee, then these things begin to arise. The next stage is Anandam Buddhi Vardhanam. When we come to the proper level while chanting the name of Krishna, we find the transcendental ocean that is above all sorts of experience. The name comes to assert himself over us according to the degree of our surrender. And when our surrender is complete, we feel a new type of ecstatic joy. We experience an infinite ocean of joy, which is not static, but always dynamic. There we find new life, and a new type of blissfulness. It never becomes stale or static, but at every moment gives us a taste of the infinite ocean of ecstasy. The last effect is that our entire existence is purified. This kind of enjoyment does not pollute, it purifies. Enjoyment means exploitation. Mundane enjoyment creates a reaction and pollution attacks the enjoyer. But here 
because Krishna is the aggressor, then the result is purification. All enjoyment that comes from the center, from the autocratic desire of Krishna, purifies us completely. In this verse, the words Sarvatma Snapanam mean that all different phases of the self, which may be conceived, are fully satisfied and purified at once by chanting the holy name of Krishna. And there is another meaning of Sarvatma Snapanam. If we praise Krishna congregationally, we will be purified according to our capacity. Both the singer and the audience, as well as anyone who comes in connection with the transcendental sound, will be purified. Snapanam means purifying. That vibration purifies everyone and everything that comes in touch with it. So Mahaprabhu says, go on with Sankirtan, the congregational chanting of the holy name of Krishna. Of course, Sankirtan must be genuine, so association with saints is necessary. It is not an empirical attempt. We are attempting to have a connection with the higher, unconditioned realm, which can descend to help us here. We must have that connection with higher reality, for that is all important. The holy name of Krishna is not mere physical sound. It is not leap, leap deep only, but it has a greater and higher aspect. Namakara bahirai bate tabu name kabunai. It is all spiritual. We are in the marginal plane of existence. So some higher connection is necessary in order that the wave will descend from that higher realm and come to us and spread its influence outside as well. Wherever it goes, the Sankirtan of the Holy Name of Krishna will produce these sevenfold results. This is the purport of Mahaprabhu's first verse. The first effect is that the holy name cleanses the soul, which is attacked by the dirt of desires from the mundane world. By the second effect, it gives mukti or liberation, perfect independence from material forces. The, <coughs> the third effect brings real fortune, the opening of the soul's treasure. The innate resources of the soul are gradually awakened by the holy name of Krishna. Here, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu includes the other forms of relationship with the personal absolute. In describing the next step, he takes the mood of conjugal devotion, where one is absolutely disposed for Krishna's enjoyment, unconditionally surrendering everything for his maximum pleasure. And the next effect is the tasting of his ecstatic association. In Brindavan, the realm of Krishna, one can, can chant the name of Krishna properly. One who can chant the name of Krishna properly will express himself with a particular sort of ego. Tunde tandabiniratim bittanute tundabali labdhyate Karna Kroda Kadambini Gatayate Karna Buddha Bhyaspriham Cheta Prangana Sangini Bidjayate Sarvendriyanam Kritim No Jane Janita Kiyadbhir Amrita Krishneti Barna Dwai When the holy name of Krishna appears on the lips of a devotee, it begins madly dancing. Then the name takes over and handles him as if the person to whom the lips belong lose all control over his lips. And the devotee says, With one mouth, how much can I gather the ecstasy of the holy name? I need millions of mouths to taste its unlimited sweetness. I'll never feel any satisfaction by chanting with only one mouth. And when the sound Krishna enters the ear 
He feels that transcendental sound awaken in his heart. What are two ears, he thinks. This is the greatest injustice of the Creator. I need millions of ears. Then if I could hear the sweet name of Krishna, my heart might be a little satisfied. I want millions and millions of ears to hear the sweet name of Krishna. This is the temperament of a devotee when his attention is drawn towards the holy name. Then he faints. He loses himself merging in an ocean of ecstasy and joy. And in great disappointment, he says, I fail to understand the quality and quantity of the substance of Krishna's name. I am perplexed. What sort of honey sweetness does this name contain? In this way, the chanter of the name wonders. This has been taught to us by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who said, Properly chant the holy name, the sound representation of absolute sweetness. That sweetness is also to be found in the flute song of Krishna. The sound of Krishna's flute has the great mystic power of capturing and pleasing everyone and everything. Upon hearing the sound of Krishna's flute, the Jamuna's current is paralyzed. The sweet sound of Krishna's flute attracts the trees, the birds, and the beasts. Everything is astounded by contacting the sweet vibration from Krishna's flute. Sound vibration can work miracles. Sound has the higher capacity, capturing potency. Sound can make or mar. It can do anything. It has such intrinsic capacity. It comes from the subtlemost plane. Beyond the ether, that universal sound is absolute sweetness and goodness. How much power is there? How it can capture us? Like a blade of grass, we may be played by the current of that sweet sound in such a way that we cannot even trace our own personality. We may lose ourselves there, but we do not die the soul is eternal. Diving up and down, we are played by the current of that sweet sound. We are less qualified than a straw, a blade of grass. And the Krishna sound is so big and so sweet that it can play us in any way it likes. We cannot begin to conceive how much power is in the name. The sound which is identical with absolute goodness and sweetness. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, don't neglect the sound which is one and the same with Krishna. Absolute sweetness and goodness, everything is there within the holy name. And the holy name is representing itself to us in a very cheap way. Nothing is required to purchase it. No money, no physical energy. All these things are unnecessary. What is required? Sincerity. One who simply takes this divine sound sincerely will be so enriched that no one will be able to conceive of so much goodness and development. And anyone may have it very cheaply, but one must chant sincerely with his whole heart. Of course, wholehearted sincerity presupposes going to a proper agent, a saint, and getting the holy name from him. Sri Krishna Sankirtan is praised by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the inaugurator of the Sankirtan movement, who came as Radha Govinda combined. His advice is most valuable and necessary to tell us that with a sincere spirit, we must come to join this Sri Krishna Sankirtan the most purifying transcendental sound which effects liberation <coughs> gives us fulfillment and grants us such a positive attainment that we lose ourselves in the ocean of joy and inconceivable sweetness. This is Sriman Mahaprabhu's grace and he proclaims 
Let Sri Krishna Sankirtan be expanded into this mortal world, that it may benefit everyone infinitely. <coughs> for this is the highest and greatest benefit for the whole world. It is all comprehensive. It releases us from all sorts of troubles, establishing us in the highest position of attainment. And in this present degraded age of Kali, only Nama Sankirtan can help us. Of course, Nama Sankirtan is beneficial in all ages, but it is especially recommended in Kali Juga, because in this age all other attempts will be opposed by many forces. Nam Shankirtan cannot be opposed by the troubles and waves of this material world. So one must adopt it. If we exclusively give ourselves to this, we will gain the highest fulfillment of life. There is no necessity of any other campaign, for they are all defective and partial. But the most universal, captivating and beneficial thing is Nama Sankirtan, which takes us to the highest goal, and that alone can satisfy everyone. All souls that are now disconnected from Krishna may be helped in this way. <clears throat> no other movement is necessary. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tells us, Exclusively devote yourself to this. It is all embracing and all fulfilling. And you can achieve it with the least trouble and least energy. Let it flourish in this Kali Juga. Let it flourish for the welfare of the whole universe to re-establish all souls in their normal position. In the last verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, the conclusion of the book is given as follows. Nama Shankirtanam Jasya Sarva Papa Pranashanam Pranamo Dukasamanas Tam Namami Harimparam Pap means all anomalies, all undesirable things, sin. Material enjoyment and liberation are also included as anomalies or sinful activities. And why is liberation considered sinful? Because it is an abnormal condition. Our natural function is to serve Krishna, but we do not do that in salvation or mukti. Mere salvation does not include service to Krishna, so that is an abnormal position and therefore it is also a sin. To ignore our natural duty and stand aloof cannot but be sinful. The concluding verse of Srimad Bhagavatam says, Krishna's holy name can relieve us from all undesirable sinfulness. All filthy characteristics and all miseries, let us bow down to him. Uttering this verse, the Srimad Bhagavatam stops. That great treatise becomes silent. The last word in the Bhagavatam is Nama Shankirtan. The Bhagavatam has given such great importance to chanting the holy name of Krishna. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu developed it from there. The last publication of the compiler of the Vedic literature Srila Vyasadeva took theism to that stage and gave it to the public, announcing, chant the name of Krishna, do this, nothing more is necessary. Take this. This is the very conclusion of Srimad Bhagavatam, the greatest spiritual gift of Vyasadeva. Chant the holy name of Krishna and begin your life in this dark age, with the most broad and wide theistic conception. We may consider ourselves fortunate that we have come to the verge of this most generous and useful thought, that we have come close enough to touch it, to accept it, and float ourselves in its waves according to our capacity. 
After passing through so many conceptions and the charm of different prospects, we have left them all behind and have come to the shore of the ocean of Nama Shankirtan. Now we may throw our bodies in the ocean and begin to swim in the waves of Nama Shankirtan, the nectar of the nectarine, by the grace of our Guru and the mercy of the Vaishnavas. It is their property and we are their slaves. We have such audacity to throw our body into this ocean of Nam Shankirtan and swim in that nectarine ocean. Swimming in Radhakund, the highest conception of spiritual attainment, can also be found in the highest form of Nam Shankirtan. This verse represents the positive side of the unlimited ocean of Sri Krishna Sankirtan. And the next verse explains the negative possibilities. <clears throat> Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has given his Sanskrit commentary on the Shikastakam as well as his Bengali translation. And his is a most original presentation. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada has also given his commentary on the Shikastakam. They should be carefully studied in order to understand these points more completely. In these talks, however, I am simply coming out with whatever I feel in my heart. Whatever comes to my mind on these verses, I am expressing, and that is the outcome of what I have collected from Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and all the predecessor acharyas. By their grace, that is gathered in my storehouse, and I am trying to give the gist of these things. <clears throat> By accepting the path of devotion, a wholesale transformation of our internal system begins. And gradually our charm for the outside world vanishes. There is a war within. And when the Krishna conception enters into the heart of a devotee, all other thoughts and ideals <clears throat> gradually have to retire. This is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhishta karna randrena shvanam bhava saroruham dunoti shamalam krishna Shali Lashya Jata Sharat. When the autumn season appears, the mud within the water vanishes. In the same way, when the Krishna conception enters into one's heart, all other conceptions and aspirations will gradually have to retire. Leaving Krishna in possession of everything, when a real drop of Krishna consciousness enters the heart, all opposing forces must leave and Krishna will conquer and take possession of the whole. That is the nature of Krishna consciousness. Nothing can stand in competition with it. Not even the so-called devotion for the demigods or faith in creeds like Christianity, Islam and others. All other conceptions of theism have to retire, leaving the field to the Krishna conception. No aggressors can stand in the fight with Krishna consciousness, the absolute sweet beauty. Beauty, sweetness and charm can capture and defeat power. We are really aspiring after beauty and sweetness, mercy, affection, <coughs> divine love, prema. Self-dissipation to compensate others with one's own energy and generosity, ultimately conquers everyone. It is more rewarding to give than to take. Divine love means die to live, not to live for yourself, but to live for others. The most generous form of life, self-forgetfulness to the extreme, is found in Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is so beautiful that one who develops it loses his own identification and existence also. 
He becomes totally self-forgetful. Such a charm is there. Who will stand to fight against Krishna? Everyone who comes to fight against him is disarmed. If in any way Krishna enters the heart, there can be no other consequence but that he takes possession of everything. Such a benevolent, generous, and sweet person is Krishna. Reality the beautiful. So, it's the end of this chapter. <clears throat> so, step by step, we progress in Krishna consciousness. And this is very, not whimsical or sentimental or um, haphazard, but it, it is actually very scientific. The power of Krishna Nam. I was surprised to read, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasdhi Thakur says, that even Nama Parad can effect liberation. Even Nama Parad. So even Nama Parad can give uh, benefit to the Jiva. Uh, Aparad means offense. So it means to chant the name of Krishna, but offensively to chant the name of Krishna. And we know there, according to the Padma Purana, ten offenses to the name of Krishna. First being to... Um, uh, to give some uh, disregard or abuse to the sadhu. And sadhu in this context doesn't just mean the holy man, but it means who is trying to spread Krishna consciousness in the world. This is the meaning of sadhu. Sadhu ninda means this. Those who are the agents of Krishna who have come to try to give Krishna consciousness to the people in general, whatever their position may be, whatever their capacity may be, if we abuse them, then, then that is offense to the holy name. And ten offenses altogether. And the last offense, the holy name, which is perhaps the most difficult of all, is after hearing everything, after... Uh, assimilating so much knowledge of Krishna consciousness that we still remain attached to the things of this material world. That we still cannot develop real love for Krishna. This is the tenth offense. I asked Srila Govinda Maharaj once. Then aren't we all doomed for that offense? Aren't we all committing that offense? Like from beginning to end, we are all you know, that's the very nature of uh, um, our attempt. We are not developing love for Krishna. And that offense is causing us to go in the wrong way. And how, how, to, how to counteract that? Srila Govinda Maharaj's reply was, The meaning is that the holy name of Krishna wants to take us somewhere. Wants to take us in a particular direction. But we are resisting that. We are thinking, no, no, I know better. This, I want to go this way. I want to go in this, in this uh, direction. And we're resisting the, the movement that the Holy Name is trying to uh, compel us in this way. In a gentle way, because we have free will. And free will presupposes not only that we will use our free will f for the right thing, but we also have capacity to misuse our free will, which you can say in a general sense is why we're here in this material world to begin with, the misuse of our free will. But free will is necessary in the jiva soul because without free will, there's no possibility of love. Love must be given freely. It must be from us, must come from us in our limited capacity. But we find in this material world that that's the one thing that everybody has in common. 
Everybody has capacity for love, to give love and to receive love. And everybody's trying to do that in their, in their own way, but in a misconceived way. So we're always looking for that in the wrong place. We are thinking that, yes, yeah, somewhere out there, there's my soulmate is waiting for me. You know, I just have to find that person my, and then I'll be complete. Someone that I can give my love to and who will give love to me without any condition, who will just accept me as I am and we, this way. Then I'll be complete. And so many songs and so many books and so many films on this subject. Pretty much everyone. <coughs> And we can't leave it, this idea. Although we know, actually, that more or less, generally in this material world, love is um, doomed in this material world. And that's, that's the subject of the film, right? When you watch the film, you know, boy meets girl, or whatever it is, you know, something happens, they get separated. And, and everybody's, oh, it's a great tragedy. That's not, they're not going to have their fulfillment together because of some misunderstanding or something. Then what will, what will happen? And, and uh, you know, everyone's crying to see that. And then finally, you know, some re resolution comes. But some, and we can't leave that idea. Although it's not possible, actually, in this material world to find that complete fulfillment. We still can't leave it. I can say, you know, coming home one day, you know, my, my wife and my daughters, they're watching some film on the television about this, you know, some love film, something like that. And all three, they're crying. It's become so unhappy, emotional. so emotional. They're all crying. And I walked in. What are you watching? I said, you know, oh, let's watch something else, you know, like something cheap. No, 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 we can't leave it. We have to see how it works out in the end. So, you know, this is, although we know, it's our experience in this world that these things never rarely work out. And even if somebody is lucky enough to find, you know, that perfect relationship, that perfect person that they can find, that loves them unconditionally and, you know, like, it, it, and they have this, you know, blissful, happy life together. One of them will die eventually. And that, then that's finished. That relationship's finished. And again, a heartbreak. You know, like my aunt, my great aunt, she lived, when, when I was a boy, she lived in the country, this little cottage in the country after her husband died. She was kind of elderly, he was elderly. But they were so devoted to each other. When, when he died, every night she used to make it the table, the place at the table for him, even though he's gone. You know, she couldn't leave it. And then within one year, she also died, like heartbroken in separation from him. Yeah, this is the nature of this material world. Unrequited love, it's the, it's the subject of poetry and literature and so many things. In fact, Shelley, you know, the, the British yeah. poet Shelley, sure. he said the the sweetest songs tell of the saddest tales. So we know that. It is a, a great um, uh, theme in literature and so many things. But we can't still, although our experience tells us the opposite, we can't leave that idea that maybe this is possible somewhere. Because... It is possible, but only possible with Krishna. Actually, that's the truth of the matter. We have a soulmate, and his name is Krishna. He is our soulmate. And like, unlike you know, the, our partners in this material world, he'll never disappoint us. He'll never, he'll never um, let us down. He'll never not be there for us. We think, you know, we may let him down, of course, but he will never let us down. And he'll always, infinitely always, willing to give us another chance. And really, he is our soulmate. Because we are purely spiritual beings. 
And our fulfillment can only be when our small soul joins with that big soul, that is Krishna, the ultimate absolute person. When our soul is in union with him, then we can have our actual fulfillment, real fulfillment. So Krishna consciousness is meant to awaken this within us. That is the this chanting of the holy name of Krishna. It fosters and engenders and awakens that consciousness within our own consciousness. And step by step by step. It is sometimes it is in a flash it can happen. That's called Udipana, you know, like a flash you see. Encouragement. Yeah, like like Saul on the road to Damascus. Suddenly in a flash he saw someone that, you know, awakenment of uh, that is to encourage us of course. But but generally you know, slow and steady wins the race by following uh, in a slow and prescribed way, steady way, then we will make good progress in spiritual life. And step by step, some uh, advancement will come in our attempt. Some awakenment of, of some higher vision will, will arise within us. So where there we will see that everything in this material world ultimately comes to zero. And we, do, we have nothing to aspire for in this material world. That's the problem that we're all faced with, is that we're all running after so many things that are, have no basis in reality. In Gita, Krishna says, the wise who see that which has no um, endurance in this world doesn't actually exist. And at the same time, that which has no cessation, that is the, the spiritual eternal. reality, the eternal reality. So now we're running after all kinds of temporary things, thinking that that will give us fulfillment in life. You know? And what is that main thing that we're running after generally? Money. Money. Yes, money. and Lust. Convenience and comfort. This is what we want. We want a, a convenient life, no, with no, um, no trouble, no poverty, no suffering, and we want independence from everything. And we think that money will give us that. Actually, that's what we think. Money. We're and we're all taught that. The government teaches that. Our teachers at school teach us that. Everybody. Uh, you know, even the the ministers in the church, they teach us like that, you know. If you will become wealthy and independent, then you can live a happy life. But but we find that actually that's not really true. And, uh, you know, then, in fact, the more you have, the more anxiety it gives you. This is the, this is the, um, the truth. And one more. When people go to the region praying to the God or the Krishna or whatever God, mm. say, God give me this, uh, good, give me money, give me uh, property, give me this uh, success. Yes. Is it the right way to pray to a God? He is not our slave or the he is yes. not our what is that's a no. is that's a greed, isn't it? It's greed, yes. Uh, in fact, I had a, a friend that I used a work colleague that I used who was a Christian, and he used to say to me you know, we don't, we're not, we're not supposed to pray for our, for things for ourselves. Yes. And I say, yeah, that's true. And he would say, so what we do before we go to the prayer meeting at our church, yeah. we have a meeting before that. Yeah. And and I'll say to you, so what do you need? And you say, well, you know, my daughter's taking her exams and my car's failing. I need a new car yeah. and you know this this. And, and then I'll tell you, yeah, and I need this, this, this. So then when we go into the prayer meeting, yeah. I'll pray for all the things that you want, <laughs> and you pray for all the things that's that like I a, want. That's like a shopping list. Like it? a shopping list. <laughs> and I said to him, and is God fooled by that? He said, what do you mean? Like and I this. said, do you think God's fool? Have you tricked God in that way, you know? Oh, you're not praying for yourself. You're only praying for others. But like, you've got your friend to pray for you what you want, and you pray for what your friend wants. That's hypocrisy. The hypocrisy, yeah. So this is, this is, this is not necessary, actually, for us he knows everything, what to pray to him for anything material. Yes. 
because he knows what we need. Already he knows. Like Lord Jesus said, you know, just he said, look at look at the um, the birds in the field. There, and uh, and the beasts in the field, neither do they sow nor do they reap. They, they don't toil, and and uh, God gives them everything. They and his, he, what does he say? Solomon in all his glory was never as as wealthy as they are. Then that, that's then. Do you think that you that he will think any less of you and not give you what you require in your life? So he he excuse me. <coughs> he already knows what we need better than we do. We might think we need this and we need that. You know, we need the big, you know, 60 inch television and the new Mercedes Benz and the bigger house and this and all these things. But be careful what you wish for, you know, because some things, they corrupt you. Wealth corrupts you, actually, you know. They, they, the, everyone knows that saying, right? Money is the root of all evil. So when a, a few years ago I was in in Kiev in the Ukraine, and uh, we had a we have a festival there every year, or we did until the before the war uh, called Veda Life. We have a Veda Life festival there, and uh, and I was invited sometimes to go and speak there, and and you know because they are um, the, the Ukraine is part of the former Soviet yeah. Union, so some so some kind of. Uh, that thinking is still with those people. Then one man asked me in my lecture, is it a sin that if I have more money than my neighbor, is that a sin? And I said, and you know, maybe a kind of communistic kind of idea that we should all be equal and like this. I said, no, it's not a sin if you have more wealth than your neighbor. But what, is, what it may be a sin is what you do with your wealth. Not the wealth itself. Money is uh, nothing. It's, it's what you do with that that is the, uh, makes it sinful or, or pious. You can use your money for, you know... For well-being. Yeah, for, for all kinds of sinful things. It can facilitate all of that. Or you can use it for the, for the service of others and for, and for the service of God. And if you use it for the service of God, then you're... Then your wealth actually has real meaning. So it is, nothing in this material world is innately sinful or bad, but it's its utility which makes it good or bad. So, you know, we are. Whatever comes to us is coming to us. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasi Thakur he said, you know, there's nothing you need to do. To make your karma happen. It's coming already. It's already predestined. And there's nothing you can do to stop it from happening. So don't waste your time with that. Trying to, you know, change your karma. Or, you know, make all these things in your life. That's already pre preordained. How much suffering, how much happiness is due to you in this life. That's already decided from your previous life. Then, rather than do that, utilize your time for the cultivation of Krishna consciousness. And your, and your enjoyment, suffering, all of these things will come as it's meant to. So, but you will be, if you develop Krishna consciousness, you'll be aloof from that. You won't, it won't affect you. You know, so much, so much suffering in this material world that we cannot, that we cannot face the world. And so much enjoyment in the material world that we cannot see, we forget ourselves in that enjoyment also. So, not to be affected by that. Krishna says that in Gita, Matra Sparshas Tukunteya, Shito Sharsukha Dukha, Agama Paino Nityas Tam Titiksha Shabharata. Krishna says, Shuk and Duk, happiness and distress, they, they come like the winter and summer seasons. They, they come. Nobody invites them, they just come. Nobody wants suffering, but we all know suffering comes to us in our life. Unavoidable. So Krishna says, then just tolerate them. There's nothing else you can do. Tolerate. And, then, and rather utilize yourself, utilize your energy 
for something higher, for a higher purpose. So this reason Krishna has given us free will. Because with, with that free will, we can actually bring about our greatest fortune if we utilize our energy in the proper way. And the saints and the scriptures, they have given us some indication of that. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu specifically, he has come to inaugurate this chanting of the holy name of Krishna as the, as the religious process for this age, the Juga Dharma. And actually no other religious process is necessary than the chanting of the holy name of Krishna. Because everything else in Kali Yuga is defective. Whatever you will try to do must be defective in one way or another. So, but the chanting of the holy name of Krishna, it is the one great thing in Kali Yuga. This world, this Kali Yuga is an ocean of faults. Quarrel, war, hypocrisy, suffering of all kinds in this material world. But simply by chanting the name of Krishna in, the, in congregation, all the benefits that we, you could have got in previous ages by following yoga, by following um, tapasya, sacrifice, by the process of archan, by the process of, of a meditation, all of these things that were recommended in previous ages, all of that and more you can get by the chanting of the holy name of Krishna. So, you know, in Bengal they have a saying, this is a quite a common saying, the rainy day is not the bad day, but the day when we can't hear something about Krishna, that's actually a bad day. So we don't judge an age, the age that we live in just by the external circumstance. Externally, the Kali Yuga seems to be the worst age. This is called the Iron Age, you know, the worst age. And we're thinking that Satya Yuga, the Golden Age, that's the best age. But actually, Kali Yuga is the best age. Because in this age, the revelation of divinity has never been greater. With the advent of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then a new, uh, a new revelation has come. Mm, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami has written in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Anar pita chirim chirat karuna eva tena kalo, samar paita munuto jalara sam sabakti shriyam. Anar pita chirim chirat means you have come to give what's never been given in the world before. So when Krishna himself came in Dapara Juga and he showed his Vrindavan Leela, but that was in a closed group, it wasn't to everyone. You won't find that mentioned very extensively in the scripture even, only in Sriman Bhagavata. You're not in Mahabharata, you won't find it in Mahabharata. Only one mention of Krishna's Brindavan Leela in Mahabharata, that's in the Bhastraharan of, of Draupadi. You know, when they, they tried to yes. de derogue Draupadi, when she threw her arms in the air and she called Krishna, Hey Gopi Janabalaba. Then it is told, when Krishna heard Gopi Janabalaba, he couldn't resist, he had to come. That means the lover of the gopis. And that refers to Krishna's Brindavan Leela. So, <clears throat> but otherwise, it is not mentioned hardly at all, in, even in Mahabharata. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, that's in a closed group. But Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Dev, he has come, by the, and by the distribution of the holy name, of Krishna, he has made that highest thing available to everybody. He has come to teach that to the world, to reveal that to the world, not only as, you know, some mystical, abstract, uh, hidden uh, pastime of the Lord, but as the highest attainment of the soul. And this is freely given through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. This revelation has never been greater. This kind of revelation, not even in Satya Yuga, they, you cannot find. So it, it is said that in this Kali Yuga, that even the gods in heaven, they are praying to take birth in this, on this earth, to take part in Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan mission. 
by the chanting of simply by the chanting of the holy name of Krishna, the highest attainment of Goloka Vrindavan, Krishna Prema, that is uh, available to everyone, and not at a very expensive price. Not necessary to be a great tapasi or a great jnani or rishi or anything, but anyone can chant the holy name of Krishna. Even a baby, pretty much. A child can chant the name of Krishna. You, even whether you're super intelligent or stupid, you can chant the name of Krishna and reap the benefit of that. Because this is what we are discussing now, that Mahaprabhu, he is invested all of, uh, Krishna has invested all of the potency of his own potency in his holy name. The holy name of Krishna is Krishna, non-different from Krishna. There is no difference between Krishna and his name on the absolute plane. That is, is called, that is called Adhyayan Tattva, that one indivisible truth that is given as the holy name of Krishna. So in the material world, by saying something, the name of something, it does not give you that thing. If you're in the desert, and calling water, water. Just by calling water, water won't come to you. But simply by chanting Krishna, Krishna, Krishna automatically there in His holy name. Immediately you are in communion with Krishna. Krishna and His name are the same. Then it is the easiest way to... Uh, to um, Connect with Krishna through His holy name. And Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhu, the foremost follower of Sri Chaitanya Dev, he says that although there is no difference between Krishna and His holy name, if there is any difference, that difference is that Krishna's holy name is even more merciful than Krishna. Because in our attempt to serve Krishna, we may make all kinds of mistakes and, and offense to Him. But simply by continuing our chanting of the holy name of Krishna, all our offenses also become uh, dissipated. We become forgiven, not just forgiven, but wiped away. So the holy name of Krishna is so uh, wonderful. But why is it that we that simply by chanting Krishna's name we're not feeling that ecstasy within us? Because now our consciousness is covered with the material desires of this material world. You can say, which altogether that means acquired misconception, acquired um, prejudices, and acquired tendencies of this material world. They are covering our soul, and they are covering our ability to see things clearly. This, in a nutshell, this is called our ego. Our ego. Ego means identity. But now we are identifying with a, with a misconceived idea of ourselves. When we look in the mirror, although we may understand philosophically, I'm not this body and all of that, but when we look in the mirror, we're still thinking it's me that we're seeing there, isn't it? So, you know, we know we are a victim of this. And so Srila Govinda Maharaj, he would say, separating us from Krishna is a Himalayan mountain range of ego. Then if we are able to dissolve that ego, then we'll see the smiling face of Krishna. That when that ego is gone from us, that false ego, then... The name of Krishna and Krishna, we will be able to perceive the same, no difference. And when we take the name of Krishna, automatically we will feel ecstasy. But the whole purpose is to um, dissolve that ego. And we doesn't mean we have we'll have no ego, but we will have a real ego. What's that ego? Mahaprabhu says, "Naham bipro narapatir." Napi Vaishon na Shudro na Hambani na Chagriha na Vanastir Jatirva Kintu Prajan Nikila Paramananda Punambritabde Gopi Bharta Padakamalayo Das 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 Anudas. I'm not a Brahmin, I'm not a Katriya, I'm not a Vaisha or a Shudra, I'm not a Brahmachari, I'm not a Grihasta, I'm not a 
vanaprasa or a sannyasi. I'm none of those things. Then what am I? Only the servant of the servant of the servant of the ever-expanding ocean of ecstasy, the master of the gopis, Lord Krishna. That's who I am. That's my real, my real ego is that. But now we are suffering, Rupa Goswami says in uh, Upadesh Amrita, we are suffering from avidya. Avidya means ignorance or, you know, misconception. Then he says, he says, the, uh, the, uh, what is that? Disease? Jaundice. The jaundice of avidya, he says. So, when someone is suffering from jaundice, like hepatitis, and I can, I can confirm this is true because I have hepatitis twice when I was in India. I had it. And, and when you have that, because you produce so much bile in your system, everything tastes bitter to you, to your tongue. Everything. Put pure sugar on your tongue, it tastes, it tastes bitter to you. So Rupa Goswami uses this example. Now our consciousness is covered by the jaundice of avidya, of misconception. We cannot taste the sweetness of Krishna's name. It tastes bitter on our tongue. He says, but in, but in Ayurvedic medicine, the, the, um, the cure for jaundice is a medicine made from sugar candy. I don't know how they make it, I don't know. But it's made from sugar candy. So you can understand that naturally, that tastes very sweet. But when you have jaundice, when you take that medicine, still it tastes bitter. Says, but simply by taking that in a proper dosage every day, as the jaundice becomes relieved, then the natural sweetness of that sugar candy will come through and you'll be able to taste. This you'll be able to think, oh, I'm getting better because now it's starting to ta taste sweet on my tongue. So he said, similarly, simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna every day, proper um, medicine from the proper doctor, that's also important, excuse me, that we receive the name of Krishna from the proper source. Then by taking that medicine every day, gradually that Avidya, that jaundice of avidya will dissipate and the natural sweetness of the holy name of Krishna will manifest on our tongue. And so then our Gurudev says that, that the tongue, that Krishna will make your tongue his dancing place and make your heart his living place. So this is a very simple process. Just every day chant Krishna Nam and your consciousness must become purified. And it is not, we are not saying that in a moment you will um, experience that. But gradually. gradually, it is the medicine. So like when you go to the doctor, he doesn't say, yeah, take this tomorrow, you'll be better. No, you have to take it over a period of time. This is the prescription. You have to follow this diet. You have to do this exercise. You have to, and if you cooperate with the doctor, you'll, your health will return. So similarly, Sri Guru is the doctor, the saints, the sadhus, they are the doctors. They have given some prescription, some medicine, and some diet, and some exercise for us, something for us that we have to follow. If we cooperate, then gradually our consciousness will become Krishna conscious. Then we will be able to see what is what. Then we will, be, when we look in the mirror, we will see our own self. Because the because the soul can perceive its own self. It doesn't need anything to be able to perceive its own self. You don't need any senses to be able to know your own self. That will reveal in its heart. Just like when you are hungry, no one needs to tell you when, you, when you've taken food. Your own self, you know, oh, now my hunger's gone. I feel some nourishment and some strength coming and uh, benefiting from that. No, no a third party needs to tell you that. Your own experience tells you that. So similarly, 
when we practice Krishna consciousness, our own experience will show us, oh, now I'm not feeling desire for the things of this material world. I'm getting some spiritual nourishment and I'm feeling satisfaction. This is a simple thing. This is our... This we have learned from our gurus and we have learned from Sri Chaitanya Dev who has come to give this to the world. Although it has come as a gift from India, you can say, but it is not just for Indians. It is for everyone. It is the souls. You know, often it is described as Sanatan Dharma or the eternal religion, but actually we prefer the term Jaiva Dharma. It is the religion of the soul and that is for everyone. It is not for any particular race or for any particular caste or creed or anything. It is for everyone that, because the jiva, the jiva, the soul within, that is common, everyone the same. And Krishna common to everyone. You, in different languages, they may call him by different names. In, the, in Spain, they call the sun Sol. In India, Surya. In England, sun. But it is not describing a different, same, same entity, same, same, same sun for everyone. Not Indian sun or English sun or, you know, Spanish sun. Sun is sun. So, so God may be called by different names, but he is one, the same for everyone. And so when Sanatana Goswami asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on their meet, first meeting, he asked him, Kiyami. Who am I? He said. And why am I suffering in this material world? Mahaprabhu's reply was, Jivera Swarupohoi Krishnera Nityadas Krishnera Tatasta Shakti Beda Bed Prakash. And you are the Jiva, you are the soul. And the form of the soul, Jivera Swarupohoi, is Krishnera Nityadas, the eternal servant of Krishna. Krishnera Tatasta Shakti. That means you've come from the marginal energy of Krishna. You have come, uh, that means you're margin, tata, tata, means margin. Means you can go this way or you can go that way. So, you know, like uh, um, is given in the scripture, like where the water meets the land, that's called Tata. Not, it's not the ocean, it's not the land, but it is between the two. So similarly, so similarly, uh, we are coming, we are that energy of the Lord. We have the potency to go to the spiritual side or go to the material side. We can adapt to either. Srila Guru Maharaj gives an example in 1947 when there was the partition of India and Bangladesh. So previously, Bangladesh was East Bengal and West Bengal other side. Then, they, then when the partition came, East Bengal became Bangladesh. East Pakistan. Yeah, originally called East Pakistan, yeah. But then Bangladesh. But, but when they made the partition, they, they drew a line, basically, an arbitrary line. And this side India, this side uh, Bangladesh. So... But for some people, that line went right through the middle of their house. Yes. So this side of the house there in India, this side of the house there in Bangladesh. Still, yeah. yeah, still. So for those people, then they had to give special passport to those people. That they can go both sides. This is Tatasta. We, have, we are like that. We can go to the spiritual world or we can go to the material world. Both options are open. Both options to us. We can adapt to either. So... Mainly, mainly everyone going to the spiritual side. But some of us, by the misuse of our independence, we are coming here to the material side. How do you define, because of this one, everyone, almost everyone, they believe that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. Yes. And the Gita is the only scripture you should follow and you should read. Yeah. However, the society, there are the lots of gurus, they are disguising, and they are claiming themselves as a... As a reincarnation of Krishna or that they are thus next to the God. Right. How do we define that? Because people are misguided by these sort of disguising gurus. Yes, it is a fact. And it is one of the symptoms of yeah, Kali and Yuga. The, and they all about the world and all of everywhere you can see lots of people, they're gathering and they're 
claiming they are, they are holding yes. up the real gurus. Yes. This is one of the symptoms of Kali Yuga. And, and actually, but our Guru Mahārājas would say that if you're not in the market to be cheated, then nobody can cheat you. Only if you want to be cheated, then there are many people ready to cheat you. The groups are there. They're already there, yeah. So someone will, most gurus, they want to flatter their disciples to get them to give them their money, isn't it? Yes. And they become wealthy and all of that. And they're telling, you know, I'll give you this special mantra and you'll become this, you'll become that. And, you know, and also it's in some places very fashionable to be, to have your guru, you know. Like in California, very popular, this uh, Deepak Chopra. Maybe you've yes, heard about yes, him, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's a nothing guy, really, yeah, you know. Yeah, doesn't wrote, know anything. Books as well, yes, yeah. yeah, and he's written many books, everything. Yeah, very and much, that, yeah. But he says things, people like what he says, right? So he, because he already wrote that people's psychology. Psychology, that's yes. what it is. And, and so one, like he says, oh, we are not human, human doings, we are human beings. And people go, that's so profound. Oh, he's so profound. You know, he's clever. He's a clever Very man. Clever. And he knows how to market himself. Yeah. And he's become an extremely wealthy he's and, well and uh, famous. But guru means who can give you Krishna. Actually, that's really what guru means. The word guru means heavy, like the Himalaya. And that means they cannot be, they cannot be moved from their position. In spiritual, they are established in the spiritual world. That thing can move them. And we are, the opposite of that, we are lagu. Lagu means light. Then we can go this way, that way, anywhere, you know, like anywhere. So, but if we are sincere, uh, then we won't be cheated. And maybe we may be, be misled for some time. That's always possible because that's one of human defects is that we make mistakes. We hear things and we think, oh yeah, that's good, let me give that a try. You know, that sounds good. We don't know anything. We give that a try. But if really we are seeking after the truth, then the truth will set us free. If we are, if we are, not, out, if we are not in the market for something cheap, then we will get something real. Because, just because in, you know, in Queen's Market they're selling the um, yes, plastic yes. jewelry, yeah, yeah. it doesn't mean that, you know, that, that, that with the glass gem, it doesn't mean that a real gem doesn't exist. It's just you won't find it there. So, you know, then similarly, just because there are so many cheaters, it doesn't mean that there, there aren't any genuine saints in the world. They are. And there, there are genuine, but it depends what we want. If we want someone to flatter us and tell us, you know, everything and make us feel better about ourselves, there are plenty of people out there to do that for us. But the real, like Srila Prabhupada, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, he said, if I drop this four regulative principles, no meat eating, no gambling, no illicit sex, no um, what's the other one? Um, intoxication, he said, and I have millions of disciples, but because I, this is my condition, if you want to follow me, then you have to practice this. Then not so many will come. Because people want, you know, they want all those other things. If they, yeah, you can freely do everything and you can become a very big, big guru in the world. You know, just say some things. Yeah. Say, you know, we are human beings, not human <laughs> doing. Wow, Guruji, so profound. So... It is really, it is down to us how much we want real, genuine spiritual life or how much we just want something cheap. When I, when I joined in Krishna consciousness, I had a, like a roommate for a while. And, uh, and he, previously, he was a follower of Sai Baba, Satya Sai Baba, Baba. in India. Yes, South India. Then, uh, then, then he became a devotee, and uh, um, he was uh, serving in India for some time. And at that time, he was in Delhi, and Sai Baba was giving a lecture in, in Delhi. 
And you know, he has that big hair. Big hair. And from there, he gives vibhuti and yeah, so many he, he things. On, he got his arm. Sometimes no, he got his arm. He swallowed the golden ring from I saw yeah. it in my own eyes. Right, right. In, in food parties. Uh, so, South India. so he's there, my friend. But now he's like wearing dhoti and tilak, <laughs> everything, you know. But Sai Baba's there and he thinks, I want, to go, I want to go and see him. You know, I like was attached to him for so long. At least go and see him, you know. So they went and everyone's queuing up to get like the, yeah. some blessing from him like that. So he joined the queue and he came. And he, but he's there with shaven head, tilak, everything. And, he's, and when Sai Baba saw him, he said, oh, you are a devotee of Krishna. He said, yes. He said, you want Krishna? Yes. Then from his hair, a murti of Krishna he gave him from his hair. In, in his yes, hand. Yes, sir, this one I saw. Is, 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 is not a, is, I don't know then how should I say. I perceived him as a magician. Yes, a magician. He's a magician and he's one more thing. He's heavily guarded. Yeah, but heavily guarded. He's surrounded by the heavy, he's a heavily guarded. He passed away now. But, yeah, uh, he passed away. But my and he showed me that murti that he had right from him yeah. but it is not made in goloka brindavan krishna it is made in hong kong krishna <laughs> <laughs> you he's, see? he's moving his hand like this yeah, and so, he's giving the people yeah the, so so whether he's a magician or whether he has mystic power or whatever he may have he cannot give krishna he can only give hong kong made in hong kong yeah, krishna the, and we want made in Goloka Vrindavan Krishna. Mm. So, you know, there are many people who, even in the name of giving Krishna, they want to cheat you, to give some, some false thing to you. And, it, and if that's what you're satisfied with, then you have what you want. But we cannot be satisfied with made in Hong Kong Krishna. We want made in Goloka Vrindavan Krishna. We want that Krishna. The real Krishna. And if we want that above everything, then no one will cheat us. Because Krishna is waiting for us. You know, Svetashvatara Upanishad, it says that the Krishna, the, the super soul in the heart, like a, like a bird in the tree, and we are another bird in the tree, two birds in the tree, Paramatma, Jivatma. Mm. And Jivatma, that one bird, he's trying all the fruits. Oh, this fruit is nice, this fruit is bitter, this fruit has given me some problem, this fruit is very palatable. Trying everything, that's us in this material. We're trying everything to enjoy everything. And the uh, other bird, the Paramatma, just watching, just observing, not interfering with us. But he's waiting. When we are finished with all that trying everything in this material world, he's just waiting, we'll turn to him. Please, Lord, accept me. And, and he will not refuse us. So this is the thing. When we are finished with all of the fleeting things of this material world, and we really want him, then he is, all, he is the nearest to us. He's already in your heart. You don't need to go anywhere to find him. He is already there. You just need to look within. But with a pure... A pure desire that he is waiting for that so sometimes we need a helping hand just like when you're deeply asleep and uh, having some dream sometimes your friend needs to wake you up hey hey wake up wake up you know you're in your uh, shouting or whatever in your dream oh tiger's coming tiger <laughs> wake up wake up and then when you wake up sometimes we don't like that my daughter <laughs> When she was younger, I would wake her up for school. Come on, time for school. And she'd, Dad, I'm having a really important dream, she would say. I'm a really important... Okay, wake up. Then, like half an hour later, taking breakfast. So what was your... Im oh, I can't remember now, you know. Can't even remember. So this is like... We're like that. We're dreaming in this material world. We're thinking it's very important, our dream. But the sadhu, the saints, they come and they say, wake up. This isn't real. You know, it's time to wake up now. And we are, no, no, this is very important. But when we wake up, actually, when we're fully conscious in the proper way, then we realize, oh, yeah, that was just a dream. I can't even remember what it was about now. You know, why was I so thinking it was so important? Uh, this is our fortune that Krishna does not abandon us. 
you know. Pavitranaya sadhunam. Krishna saying in the Gita um, that every a age I manifest myself to to establish real religion, establish the saints, and to, yeah, to show the truth to the people. So although we made a, we misused our independence and came here to try to live separately from Krishna, he didn't just like lock the door and throw away the key, get on with it then. No. He comes himself, or he can, or is, he sends his agents. Now you wake up and see how has this been working out for you, trying to live separately from me, enjoy without me. How is it working out for you? I'm still here. You can still come to me now. Please, you come to me. Then you will be happy. Otherwise, it's not possible because constitutionally, we cannot find pleasure in material things or fulfillment in material things. It's some pleasure, but it is fleeting, transient. We can't find fulfillment there because we are by nature, we are spiritual. And so we must find our fulfillment in the, in the spiritual, not in the material. And so the saints and the sages and the scriptures, they have come. This is the path to awaken you to, to your real home, to your real prospect, to your real fortune. Krishna consciousness. So it is a very uh, wonderful thing that Krishna has come to give that to us. And if we will, if we will be sincere, we will not be cheated. We will not be. We will ultimately not be misled. We will not be betrayed. Because Krishna is truth, and truth will always conquer over falsehood. Because truth is part of the eternal. And falsity is just some fleeting thing in this material world. So, today we all stop now. And uh, now we'll do arti, chant the holy name of Krishna, and then we'll take Krishna's prasada. Jai Sisi Guru Garanga, Radha Sham Sunda Giridhari Juki Jai, Jai Shil Guru Dev, Shil Bhakti Sunda Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, Jai Shil Guru Maharaj Shil Bhakti Rakak Shida Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, Jai Bhagavan Shil Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Ki Jai, Hari Nam Shankirtan Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Premanandi.